And here's the scene of that other fatal accident that Cuthbert was mentioning involving a motorcycle. This happened just before 3 this morning in Donaldson. Police tell us the motorcyclist was going north on Donaldson Pike when he veered off the road and crashed into the entrance ramp to Terminal Drive. The man died at the scene. His identity has not been released yet. He did appear to be wearing a helmet. Officers are still investigating the crash. New this morning, a driver tried to outrun police and then he crashed his car. We're told it all started when officers tried to pull over the man on Waldron Road last night. Instead of stopping, though, the driver sped off and ended up slamming into a power pole near the Nissan entrance uh, in Smyrna. Investigators think alcohol may have been involved. So far, the driver's name and what charges he is facing have not been released. Traffic is moving once again after a bad crash down on I-65 this morning. A truck overturned just south of the 840 exit in Williamson County. The road reopened around 4 this morning. Not clear if anyone was hurt. Right now, the search continues for a man who robbed a Hermitage gas station at gunpoint last night. News Channel 5's Matthew Torres is in the newsroom this morning. And I understand police think this same man may have been involved in at least one, maybe more robberies also last night. Well, Jennifer, we know there were at least three armed robberies, one in Wilson County in Mount Julia and two right here in Nashville. This morning, we are not saying they are connected. Just the fact that Metro Police are suspecting that they could be related. In fact, could be the same man who robbed all three stores. Now, one of them happened at the Dollar General on Lebanon Road in Mount, um, excuse me, at the Delta Express in Hermitage. Police say that a man walked in and robbed the clerk at gunpoint. Now, 30 minutes earlier, there was the Dollar General robbery on Lebanon Road in Mount Juliet. Uh, we did get new pictures overnight as the far as the robber. He is believed to be a uh, 5'10", uh, black man wearing uh, the hooded shirt, as you can see, wrapped around his face. Also walked in and robbed the clerk at gunpoint, got away with cash before running away from the scene. And just within the last hour, the third armed robbery we are learned about happened just before 10 o'clock last night back here in Nashville in Antioch to be specific on Tusculum Road at the Mapco gas station that too had a similar suspect description to the one in Mount Juliet so again all of things all of everything is really being sorted out right now investigators are planning to get all of the surveillance videos and probably compare them in hopes to determine whether or not they are all connected and once we do get that update we'll have it on air and online at newschannel5.com in the meantime you can go on our Facebook or even YouTube channel at News Channel 5 and shared the video with that suspect seen on the surveillance camera. In the newsroom, I'm Matthew Torres, News Channel 5. Now to the breaking news that we are continuing to follow out of Putnam County. We have confirmed that two people have been shot there in Putnam County. Sky 5 just got to the scene. This is on White Oak Flat Road. That's in the eastern part of the county. Investigators confirmed that one person died at the scene. The other was taken to the hospital. As we get more details, we of course will pass them along to you. A couple wanted for a brutal attack on a well-known music producer are now facing charges. Dustin Hargrove and his wife Nicole turned themselves in last night. They are both facing assault charges. Investigators say the two were driving home from a wedding here in Nashville when their car almost hit Deborah Deloach, who was with Nashville record producer Dave Brainerd. This all happened last month on Demumbrian Street. There was a fight and Brainerd's jaw was broken. He's since undergone extensive surgery. What would you do if a man showed up at your door covered in blood? According to police, that's what happened to a woman Monday night. We're told Jeremy Fielding had been shot multiple times at a home on East Grundy Street, and then made his way to another house to ask for help. He was flown to Vanderbilt University Medical Center, where we understand he is still hospitalized. So far, no arrests have been made. The search is on for a person who shot two men in Bordeaux yesterday. We were telling you about this story yesterday morning. Investigators say Thaddeus Watkins and Kevin Shelton were sitting in a car on Briarwick Drive when someone walked up and started shooting. Watkins tried to drive off but crashed into a mailbox nearby. He died before rescue crews were able to get there. Shelton remains in stable condition at the hospital. If you have any information that can help police, call Metro Crime Stoppers. A Fort Campbell soldier is dead after an accident during a training exercise. Post officials say he was somehow shot yesterday morning and then later died at the hospital. The soldier's name has not been released yet. So far, the shooting appears to have been accidental, but it is under investigation. It's a new era for the Metro Council. 
Last night was the first meeting for Mayor Megan Barry, not as a council member. There were also quite a few new faces. 27 of the 40 council members are in fact new. Council is also the most diverse ever with a record 15 women and 11 African Americans. New members told us this is an opportunity to discuss new ideas. Well, I think that any time that you have um, a, a woman in the room, then you've got some uh, interesting perspectives always at hand. And uh, the diversity of the women that are present is very exciting as well. I think our council looks like our city more than ever. And so it's exciting to see that voices that maybe were underrepresented in the past will have a voice here on the floor. In their first act, council members voted to approve John Cooper as the new Metro Legal Director. They also approved a $150,000 settlement in a case involving an inmate who died in the custody of the Davidson County Sheriff's Office.